What happens when men pray? Well, Dick, I, you know, I may have to define prayer, but... Uh, Let's do that first, maybe. I, I believe that truly prayer, as, as Jesus did it and as, as the apostles did it, was a response to God. Hmm. And, and instead of more of a, a begging, it was more of a response. And then when we look at James where he says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous make a lot of power available basically. Um, I, I think that those in right standing with God have a different concept in a sense of prayer. Um, but most people don't understand or know their, their relationship with God. So prayer, a lot of our prayer tends to, to take on almost a, uh, a begging aspect. Hmm. But prayer, if we, just, if we put it in the concept of what we read in the Bible, I think that, uh, I really think you were right when we were talking earlier that I think God truly listens. He, he, he is attentive to the ears of those who are speaking to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I believe that there is such a, that God waits for prayer in some senses because uh, he has constricted himself through his word to, be to respond to prayer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think it's an incredible incredible um, aspect of being christians yeah yeah and men and and the bible even admonishes us men ought always to pray shouldn't yeah men ought always to pray and faint not right and uh, pray without ceasing Ceasing, so that would that would take the definition away from being an hour spent in the morning right right you know right and uh, what is it the fervent, effectual prayers of a righteous, righteous. Yes. yeah, yeah. So prayer is a, is a very important part. And, you know, it, we've done many times, uh, you and I have had uh, discussions on, right here on this set in front of that camera there about the intimacy with God and what intimacy really is. And you can't get much more intimate than, than prayer, can you? If, you? if you put prayer to its simplest, which is conversation or yeah. communion with God, then uh, nothing can be done without prayer. Mm-hmm. There's, there is nothing without prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know I've used it here before, you know, that uh, prayer is actually putting a headphone or an earphone in your, and then turning your cell phone on and dialing Jeremiah 33, three and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. being in the constant place of listening. Listening, yes. So I, I think it, if I was to define Christianity, I wouldn't say it is praying. I would say Christianity is prayer. It's a, it's a life of communion. It's a mm-hmm. life of fellowship with the creator of the all. So I think it's, a, it's more than a primary thing, Dick. I think it is, it is the breath of life. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. for me, I, I, don't, I can't imagine someone not understanding the depth of, of God's desire to, in a sense, respond to prayer or, or respond to the communion of the heart. Because I think in the, in the deepest value, prayer is a communion of the heart. We've tended to make it a conversation from our mind, mm-hmm. but it's a communion from the heart that sometimes you can't even express in words. Yeah. You, you can't bring it out because there's such an incredible groan within you from something you see or something God has spoke to you that is, is incompatible with words. So that the expression that actually happens is this, the weeping and the crying and the groaning and the uh, spiritual utterances that, that are beyond our, our comprehension. So, um, <laughs> how? You know, I, I, just to interrupt you there for a moment, I, as, as you were saying that, I, I was thinking about uh, what I, I guess I've been doing it basically almost all my life, and that's, I, I, I've always traveled a lot, and I've traveled a lot on my own, on, alone, you know. And so often, uh, I, I remember that uh, I'd get tired of reading books and uh, studying uh, what I was gonna be talking about, you know, wherever I was going. Right. And uh, most of this was in, uh, in the business world. But one of the things that I remember uh, that I used to do a lot of times, especially on an airplane, you know, the drone of the motors and uh, the altitude, and the serenity really that you get, uh, I, I found myself talking without saying words, but talking to myself, within myself, yeah. to Jesus yeah. or to the Lord, to the Father, 
however you want to describe him. Uh, and, and, I, and often that verse would come up to me, ask me anything, just ask me anything, and I'll do it for you. Ask me anything in my name and I'll do yeah. it for you. John, I think it's John 14, 14. Yeah. And uh, so let, let's pursue that. You know, there's a lot of people say, oh, well, how, do you, what do you, what do you, how can you pray without ceasing? Hmm. How can you do that? You know, I struggled with that for quite a while when God had me studying prayer early on and it, and it brought me to tears because God would ask me sometimes when I was working or when I was driving or when I was with people that I was having conversations with and he would, right in the middle of it, he would go, are you praying? <laughs> and it, it, it drove me he nuts. Does that, he, well, yeah. he wanted me to come to a different sure. conclusion, you know, and I kept reverting back to that which I'd been taught that basically prayer was petition and, and speaking right words to God, a quoting of scriptures, uh, which there's nothing wrong with any of those. But in the midst of this study of prayer that I spent a year on, I don't know, probably I've never quit studying prayer, so I can't even say a year. But God brought me to the determination that I was a failure because I couldn't pray without ceasing. I could not keep my mind uh, speaking that which would be what I thought was prayer, you yeah. know, petitioning for someone or speaking something or or worshiping in some way that was bringing power to the kingdom until he finally brought me to the place where I broke. I just, I was driving and I pulled off the road and I just, I was weeping. I'm going, God, I can't do this. I can't obey your word. And even as I was saying it, he was going, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And in the midst of this, he's, he's just asked me, are you praying? And I wasn't. You know, what I, or what I knew of prayer, I wasn't. You thought you were just reciting words. It, it came to the place that he actually showed me then. And he says, what if prayer was not what you thought? Hmm. What if prayer was different? And it stopped my tears because I was in exasperation because I couldn't please my Jesus. And, and it just stopped me cold. And he says, what if prayer was simply keeping your heart in touch with me at all oh, times. Wow. Wow. Just being open to yeah. my presence yes. at all times. Because he says, prayer should never come from your mind, it should come from your heart. And therefore it would be a response, because where do I live? I live in your heart. Mm -hmm. I'm about, I am love. And we, you know, we picture the heart as being the center of love, which is a reality, it's the, our breathing and our blood, blood pumping is, is the essence of life. So it, it, this prayer was to be the essence of life that flows from you, mm -hmm. not from your head, not from looking at what it looks like is needed, but it's a response to your heart. So it changed my whole concept and it changed my life forever. Um, and, I, and since then I've had different people as I've been speaking and teaching and, and and prophesying or whatever in the midst of it because I'm always listening to the Lord so there's always words for somebody somewhere sure. um, since we can all prophesy. So uh, as those things were happening people would ask me how many hours a day do you pray? And I knew what they were asking. They were saying you know how many hours every morning do you get up early and sit with God and pray and read his word and prepare yourself to do a meeting like this? And, I, and the first time it happened, I just started laughing because I had no idea how I was going to answer this guy. Because I knew he was asking, you know, do, do, do I need to get up at, at four, three, five? How many hours then do I need to sit with God and, and, and read his word and petition? And do I need to have a list of things I need to pray for? You know, how, what is it that brings this anointing that you're showing us here while you're teaching? And I'm just, inside I'm laughing because... I don't have a schedule. I, don't, I, I quit. The moment God gave me the revelation of what prayer really was, I quit schedules. Uh -huh. I, I, I just no longer could, it wasn't enough. I could get up at five o'clock and spend three hours with God and it still wasn't enough. I could get up at six and read my word for, for 30 minutes and then pray for an hour and listen and, and write down things he told me and it wasn't enough. It just, it, it was unsatisfying. 
It was like that, it was yeah. like bringing a flower to a woman six months in a row, the same day and the same flower. Yeah, you know, it meant nothing. Right after a while, it just after became, a while, it just was. It was yeah. just a, a yeah. rote yeah. experience. Right. Well, I discovered that prayer was out of the heart, mm -hmm. and it was something that needed to be lived twenty four seven. That I needed to be open to God and and be in that place of listening. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, I finally, I'm going, God, what do I tell this guy? And this is like 15 years after this revelation that this man asked me this. And, and uh, I went, what, what do I tell this guy? And the Lord spoke so clearly to me. And he said, you tell him you pray 24-7. And I, I just, I, I just started <laughs> crying because sure. it was... It was my goal to live in the place of prayer, but I really, and still to this day, I kind of go, God, that couldn't be correct, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's what he said. You tell him. You pray 24-7. So I told this. It was, a, it was a group of pastors, and I told this pastor who stood up and asked the question, I says, I pray 24-7. And he didn't get it. He couldn't understand it or couldn't perceive it. And it took me about an hour of bringing up things about you know how God talks to us in the night and the in the wee hours of the morning and the, in in the day and through plants and through animals and and so much I mean he just it's better to say how couldn't he speak or how doesn't he speak but I was living in the place of recognizing his presence every moment and yeah. some way or other God was telling me that sure, sure. and and I couldn't comprehend it then, but I'm trying to explain it to this guy. Prayer is existing in God's presence and listening to your heart. Mm -hmm. Prayer is a response to the presence of God. Prayer is a reality of God in you that produces something as you look upon people, as you look upon situations. So it isn't me begging God to save a young child. It's me looking and seeing and, and responding with what God feels with what God says. Mm. And then when I began to put that into practice, um, I started seeing things happen that everybody dreams of. I started seeing miracles and signs and wonders that I had never experienced to that depth. I'd experienced them before because I'm a man of the spirit, but I hadn't experienced the depth of it. Like what I, what I experienced once I began to live in the place of listening. Yeah, yeah. So when I define prayer now, prayer is a listening. Mm. Prayer is, is, is a listening that ends up being voiced from the heart of God that brings God's word into the world. And whenever God's word comes into the world, it never returns void, but accomplishes that which it's set, set for. Yeah. So, and it's successful too, isn't it? Oh, uh, because he said it's succeeding for what I sent it for. Yeah. And, and so it changed everything. And then I understood Jesus yeah. in, in the way that he walked and what we have recorded of him. Yeah. He never prayed prayers like what we did. Yeah. You know, the only time he really prayed this intense prayer of, oh, God, take this cup from me if possible, you know, sweating tears, you know, going, ah, I'd really like this not to be your will. But other than that, his prayers were uh, a demonstration of the Spirit's presence and power in him and we can do that too can't we? oh because we have the spirit the same spirit that was in christ is in us today right john 20 21 he yeah. says he sent us in exactly the same way yeah. he was sent yeah so i'm sent in that intimacy but i must find a place where i realize it and, and recognize it mm -hmm. and i'm created in god's image i'm created in his likeness i have his heart i have his love i have his feelings i have his imagination in a sense and so if i loose myself into that place of being with god and in god and a part of god like john 17 what what jesus prays that we would be one that the glory that you gave to me would be revealed in them you know when i live in that place then there's this this huge expression of life that is prayer and you know it's interesting even as i'm sitting here Speaking this, I realize that much of my prayers, as I walk away from these moments that we're like we're having now, ends up being petition that's from my head. Mm -hmm. I pray for people because what I think others want to hear. I speak words that to me are no longer prayer. They're just a begging. 
Mm -hmm. and, and God's not looking for beggars. He's looking for sons who come and say, God, Daddy, what do I do about this? And respond then to what he says. Mm -hmm. Respond to then to what he shows us, the dream, the vision, the picture, the thought, the uh, emotion, whatever it is that happens the moment we pray. He wants us to respond to that. But instead, I'll find myself speaking words that appease men, mm -hmm. that, that speak more to their head that they might think, oh, this is really a good prayer. He quoted five scriptures. Oh, this is really good because it took him 10 minutes to pray for me. Wow, that's a really cool prayer, you know. And, and in reality, Jesus never prayed prayers that were more than a couple sentences. Yeah, right, right. His prayers over Lazarus come forth. Yeah. You know, right. uh, they're just a total difference yeah, yeah, yeah. because of where they come from. And a lot of his prayers weren't even, uh, weren't even uh, or, uh, oral. No, they they just, just came right out of his heart to the Father, and, yeah, and the Father yeah, came right he, back at him. And, he, he, he touched them. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. he moved amongst and them. And you can't fabricate that, can you? No. We try. No, you can't fabricate yeah, it, Dick. We try. You know, you, uh, I, I want to call to your attention a, um, and to the audience uh, that's viewing us today, uh, you had an experience uh, oh, some time ago when you were coming, down, uh, coming from uh, your home down here to the studio. And I remember just one line that I remember you saying to me was, Dick, I've, I, I was praying from uh, one point until we got here. And he said, I didn't even know I, didn't even know I was on the road. <laughs> you remember that? William, I think Willie, William, William was, with me, was, yeah. was with you. And he yeah. fell asleep. Yeah. And you and the Lord just were in, in, and you drove that 90 or 100 miles from Ritzville to, uh, to Tri-Cities. Yes. And, and you came in here, you, you were all aglow, you were full. Address that, because I, I know there's people out there that say, <laughs> you know, I, I pray all the time, but God never talks to me. God never, you know, I never yeah. feel that intimacy with God. How can that, how can that occur? How can we? Well, we need to humble ourselves and go back uh, to the Word. Uh-huh. And we need to trust what the Word says instead of what we've been taught. Yeah. And we need to get back to the relationship and the recognition that intimacy is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what happened to me on that day? I'm, I'm not telling people to get in the car and get lost in right. God. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is not what I'm saying. No. But there had been f several times in my life where... Uh, one time I boarded an airplane in Seattle, and uh, the next thing I knew, we were landing in Japan to refuel. Uh, the same as the trip down here. It was like I was, I was lost in a place with God yeah. that it seemed like a moment, and yet time went by. And in that place, there's such an expression of God that when you actually recognize where you're at, it seems like um, you don't really have to say anything because uh -huh. God exists in that place, and people know it. Um, they just, they respond to his presence without a single word. And I, to me, as a place I've always wanted to live, was to be prayer in such a way that people respond to you without a word. Mm. You know, and I've had people say, oh, thank you so much. You know, I've yeah. found God, yeah. and I've yeah. been redeemed, and I've set yeah. free, and my family's going to be different, and I'm going, so how did that happen? Well, I sat down next to you, and I just go, okay. Somewhere I was lost in translation, you know, in a sense, uh, uh, and yet the presence and power of God, the presence of God is, is a prayer in itself. Just bringing the presence of God to a room Yes. Answers prayers. Yes, yes. yes. Touches people. Yes. And, and is, see, th see, that's where we get it wrong. We keep thinking that prayer is a petition instead of being God's presence. That's it. That's and, it. and God's presence produces yeah. answers for other people's right. prayers. Right. So if we pray from our head, we miss it. But when we get involved with our heart in that place of, of breathing, which every breath needs to be a prayer. Yeah. So breathing is yeah. prayer. Yeah, yeah. So if I get into that place, there are times when I, I don't need to pray for the people because God's presence is an answer to their prayer. So yeah, it is, it, yeah. it be, God's presence becomes my prayer. God's presence brought to a place that touches people, not just makes them emotionally feel good, but it touches them. Yeah, yeah. And they're changed forever. Yeah. 
And I believe that that's what all of our prayers should do, but in a sense, that's the ultimate place of prayer for me. It's like Jesus walked and people came and sought him out, touched the hem of his garment, they were healed. Well, what kind of prayer was that? He didn't even do anything. He was just trying to get through the crowd and the, the disciples are trying to keep the multitude from grabbing yeah, hold of him yeah. and this woman sneaks up and touches the hem yeah, of his yeah, garment yeah. and his prayer yes. had to be that she just was able to touch him. His prayer for her because she's healed. Well, what kind of and prayer And he didn't was even that? say anything, do he? No, to she didn't, he didn't say anything. He, so then the reality of prayer... <laughs> We, we just haven't got a clue. I know. We, we are still wandering around here offering petitions from the Bible, and which are, like I said, they're good, but we can look in our own country and see they're not enough. Our country didn't change to God. Our country hasn't came to God. It's walked away from God. Yeah, yeah. So very possibly we might need to readjust our prayers and find God's presence and live in that and be a prayer. Be the answer to other people's prayer by being God's prayer presence in the midst of whatever is going on that I don't leave home without that presence of God that changes what can't be changed and I believe when we become that prayer I don't care where you're at you're gonna you're gonna see God God yeah, change people yeah, and yeah, answer yeah. their requests yeah yeah because that's I think as I'm sitting here going oh my that is the incredible prayers of the righteous. Hmm. When you recognize you're in right standing and you bring God's presence into a room, you are a prayer. You don't have to say a prayer. You are a prayer. And as that prayer unfolds, people are touched. You walk over and sit down in a chair and the guy starts crying. You know, yeah. you, yeah. You, you, you walk up to somebody and put your hand on them and instantly you have this word that comes to you and telling me he's forgiven. And you speak and say, you're forgiven. That's a prayer. But the result is, is the guy is laying on the floor weeping and crying, saying, I could never forgive myself until this moment. I recognize God's grace and I'm forgiven. Wow. You know, so the prayer was, you're forgiven. You know, the prayer for that guy that sits down next to me and starts crying is, God's presence touches him. And I, 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 that's, that's what Jesus did. Yeah. That's what Paul and Peter did. You know, Peter comes into the town and walks by people and his shadow heals them. Well, what kind of a prayer was that? Yes, that, that is still something that I just, every time I, I read that, I just shudder. I just say, Lord, could that happen even today? But that's prayer. Yeah. See that Jesus, Paul or Peter was being a prayer. Uh -huh. He wasn't praying. He was being a prayer. He was prayer. Spoke from the Father that touches people. Yeah. You know, Paul sitting in oh, a place yeah. and they're yeah. bringing him all the needs of the people. Yeah. And what's he yeah. do? He sits there and he goes, okay, give me a piece of cloth, a napkin. Yeah, let me, let me see it. Yep, okay, here. Just yeah. take that yeah. and give yeah. to them. Yeah, that reminds me of something. I got to throw this in there. In Acts 26... The second verse, first line in King James, it's only in the King James. Agrippa tells Paul, he says, Paul, I give you permission to speak. And Paul didn't go into big prayer or any prayer. You know what he said? He says, I think myself happy. Yeah. That I was his, much. that was the yeah. yeah. And I thought about that. You know, I, I put that on, I put that on my Facebook one time and, and, and normally I get six or seven people that answer me. I had yeah. 35 hits <laughs> in, in less than five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so real, you know, if we could just understand, that's praying, isn't it? Yeah. Paul was saying, I think yeah. myself happy. He yeah. was so happy to be in the presence of the Lord, and he was, yet he was in front of King Agrippa, ready yeah. to take, who was ready to take his head. Yeah, yeah. I, I really believe that as we've been sitting here this morning, I discovered something in myself and discovered something that is, has been a prayer of mine, and that's how to really truly see... Uh, any country changed, is we Christians have to become a prayer. A prayer. See, God's prayer is that we would be anointed. God's, God's word spoken to us is that we're sent like Jesus. 
that we are to be the anointing presence and power of God. And Jesus did nothing but respond to the Father. He never spoke or never said anything unless the Father told him. So every prayer that you see recorded that Jesus spoke was a response. Everything that he did that was a prayer to others, needs, was an answer to their prayer, was a response to what the Father spoke to him to do. And I think that when we really truly come back in humility to this place of of our intimacy with the Father and our oneness in Christ and in the Father, we're going to become the prayer that we beg for now. God, please heal this person. God, touch this person. I have very seldom seen God heal when I pray like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the healings, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, have been when I'm in the place where I'm a response to the Father. When I become the response to the Father, of the Father, to whatever someone has a need of. And I don't even recognize it. I don't, I don't look for it. I'm not... I'm not begging for it. I just live in this place where I am prayer. Delivered from the Father. I like that, yes. Delivered from the Father into the presence of people in such a way that my presence changes their position. My words, my touch become the touch of the Father. Now, I'm not a great guy, and and, and I have not done this all right ever. But as I'm sitting here, I recognize one more step that prayer is the Father's response to the people's need. Wow. That's who we should be. Wow. That's That's, what God wants. That's great. That's the place that will change any country, any people, any situation, is us being a response from the Father to what's in their heart and their need, and we will be prayer. Right, right. You know, Jesus said uh, when he was on the cross, he said, it's finished. And he didn't, he didn't say to be continued. No, he said But what I've got to say, it's finished because our program is over. <laughs> but it, and it is to be continued. God bless you. We'll see you on another broadcast. Focus. Focus.